uh, I want to introduce the second speaker, which is uh, who is Eyal Toledano from Sociable Labs. He's the yeah, he's the director of marketing there, and he's going to talk about the truth about website traffic. Eyal. All right, everybody. So, hi. My name is Al Toledano. I am a B2C and B2B tech entrepreneur. So, have been a tech entrepreneur for the last seven or eight years. Uh, have founded a few startups, and have been part of a few others, uh, usually in a growth or product capacity. And today, I run marketing for an incredible startup out of the old port called Sociable Labs, where we deliver world-class refer-a-friend solutions for the world's leading e-commerce brands. So we work with companies like Frank and Oak, Nine West, and a bunch of others, just to name a few. So when Charles asked me to do a talk, I thought it would be a really great opportunity to discuss a subject that is near and dear to our hearts, where uh, this idea of generating traffic and generating leads uh, sends a lot of people into this frenzy, this anxiety frenzy, uh, because they believe that generating traffic essentially ends up being this holy grail of marketing, without which they will wither and die. And you know, I feel as though this is most felt during things like product launches or sending emails or doing a Facebook campaign where, you know, traffic is starting to move up and to the right only the next day to really drop down. And obviously the problem is that this gets us really, really anxious thinking about how it is that our marketing is not delivering the long-term value that we're expecting it to. And so, as I think about that, really, the first solution is to think about what are the two main ways within which you can create traffic and eventually leads. And I, I break that into two ways. The first way is what I like to call tactics, which reminds us of that traffic spike earlier. Tactics are essentially these playbooks, and I'll, I'll include growth hacking in there as well, Sm uh, sh short term, high amount of energy put into generating traffic with the idea that there's going to be a lot of volume in a short amount of time. Uh, so a ca Facebook campaign falls into that. Uh, the other way of, of building uh, leads and building traffic is what I call systems, which conversely to tactics will be a much longer term amount of value being generated, but at a much, less, uh, a much lower amount of volume. The idea being here that it's much easier to build a, a, a sustainable and growing business if you've got uh, assets that are being built that deliver value over time, and it's easier to stack them on top of the other so that you can get your constant growth. Where instead, spikes, you'd have to work every single day, gr hit the grindstone, and bring in that traffic. So tonight, the purpose of this talk is really to introduce this idea of building systems in order to create profitable customer acquisition right from the get-go. And ideally, you'll be coming out tonight with an idea of what your system for your business might be looking like. So to get this started and really introduce what you know, a system is, I'll bring up a really you know, clear analogy of a girl walking into the bar. And in this situation, you know, you're, you're the website, you're sitting at a bar, you're there to look and uh, meet new people. And this beautiful girl walks in, right? And when we think about the best way to initiate that relationship, the absolute worst way to get that started is to ask, will you marry me, right? Like if I were to walk into a bar and a girl sits down next to me, the worst thing to get started is to say, will you marry me? And the reason that is, is we do this every single day with our websites. We send traffic to our websites and we put out a big call to action that requires a huge upfront commitment. And the reality is that the majority of that traffic is just not ready to be married. Um, so we're focused on this amazing value that we believe we're generating for those people, and we're focused on it so much that we've forgotten the basic tenets of building relationships. Um, and the, the confusing thing about this is that we might be getting on our website one to 2% overall conversion, right? As we send a bunch of people to our website, one to 2% might be converting. But I'll let you think about that relationship, right? If I actually go into a bar and I ask a girl to marry me and she says yes, I'll let you think about what kind of marriage that's gonna end up being. It's gonna be a little complicated because there, there is no clear expectations as to what both parties are looking for. And that's why things don't go uh, and turn out the way that we like to. 
So every day, like I said, we hit the grindstone, we do what we gotta do to generate that traffic, but the problem is that the approach within, with which we do get that traffic and the conversion, that, the conversion rate that it facilitates raises the expectation of the amount of traffic we need to generate into the thousands. And that's hard. That's really difficult. So when I hear people saying things like, I've got a really great offer, and all I need is to get some traffic, and it'll work out, I call bullshit on that. Because we've just determined that the approach with which you're going to go out and get that traffic is still only going to yield you nominal results. And so I'm going to be the first person to say it out loud, you don't have a traffic problem. And the reason you don't have a traffic problem is because traffic today has become a commodity, right? Talented marketers will look at traffic the same way that a farmer will look at fertilizer, that the same way that a firefighter looks at water or a trucker looks at gasoline. It's just a means to get to an end. So if I wanted to eat rice tonight for dinner, I could go out and buy some land. I could get a crazy irrigation system set up. I could get myself some rice seeds. I'm not even sure if rice is the seed or if... Anyways, I could get all that set up, but I want to eat tonight. And the amount of effort that I'd have to put into doing all that makes no sense. So what I end up doing is I get into my car, drive down to the IGA, and buy myself some rice. Traffic is the exact same thing. If you want traffic, you go down to the store and you buy yourself some traffic. So I'll let you guys guess who's in the business of selling traffic. That's Facebook and Google. So let me ask you a question. If I told you for every visitor that you were able to send to your website, I would pay you $10 net. Would you be able and would you think that traffic is now a problem? Of course not. Because you'd be able to think about and realize the reality that I'm offering you and that opportunity, which is that I could go on Facebook or Google right now, spend upwards of $9.90 a click and I still come out a winner because I'm getting $10 on every single visitor that I'm sending to my website. So traffic itself is not a problem, but your question will be, all right, well, that's fair, but what happens if everybody out there is spending the same amount per click? How do I go about generating an edge? And I win over them. And that's a really good question. And to think about how that works, you need to develop an understanding of, what, of how real-time bidding platforms like Google and Facebook work. The idea being that both Google and Facebook are creating this resource, this valuable resource, this supply of, for Google, that would be keywords. So the monthly amount of searches for a given keyword. For Facebook, that would be an audience, right? Let's say, how many women aged 20 to 25 living in Baltimore? That's a really set and defined amount, finite amount of supply. But conversely to that, the demand who wants to access that supply is advertisers. So there's, as much as the supply doesn't change so much, right, the amount of people, the f females in Baltimore age 20 to 25 doesn't change so much year on year, the amount of advertisers who do want to reach that target market does fluctuate quite a bit all the time. And so what happens is when those, uh, the amount of supply, uh, of, of, sorry, of advertisers starts to go up, that's when we start to worry again because our costs per click start to skyrocket, we're less profitable, and things go down. When I think about this idea, I think about this brilliant quote Jeff Bezos, the CEO of uh, Amazon, told once, which is, your margin is my opportunity. And what he means by that, if you think about you know, a, a given market, any given category, where there's four main players, and it's a perfect competition, so there's 25%, 25% all around, and they're all able to compete with each other on the basis that they're able to spend, let's say, $10 cost per click to bring those visitors to their website. What would happen if suddenly one of those four or a new player comes in and he's able to spend $13 cost per click? That's the opportunity. That margin is an opportunity for that advertiser because now they're able to capture the entire market on the basis that they can spend more than their competitors. So I'll go ahead and add to Jeff Bezos, uh, margin is your, is your opportunity, by saying that he who can pay the most for a customer automatically wins. So the reason that Amazon is able to do that 
is because they've been, they found a way, their system is able to recognize how much traffic is worth the same way that I told you earlier, I'll give you 10 bucks for every single visitor. They understood how much they get per visitor and have found a clever way to extract the maximum amount of immediate value from their visitors. I heard something like the average visitor on Amazon is 20 to 30% likely to make a purchase every time they hit. So knowing this, Amazon has found a way where their system, they're no longer paying for the traffic to their website. Their traffic is paying them because the amount of revenue, the earnings that they get per single visitor outweighs the amount that they would pay for every single click. And that allows them to spend way more, which allows them to capture the entire market. That's why they're winning right now. So I'll give you guys a really, really quick rundown of what, uh, of what building a system in two minutes might look like. Obviously, there's a caveat here. Uh, the first thing that you need to have is what I call product market fit. For those who don't know what market fit is, it's this basic idea that you're building a product which uh, solves a big problem, a big pain. Uh, and there's a, an audience that you're able to reach that is feeling that pain and is accepting your product to solve it. So assuming that you have product market fit, you can move forward to building a system. If not, I strongly suggest that you step back and think about this fundamental element of market fit, which would allow you to really get your product in front of the right people. So the step one is really to change the conversation. It's to create what I like to call a lead magnet, the magnet that will send you all of those leads that you're looking for. And the entire idea of a lead magnet is that it's a small piece of value that can be consumed on its own in exchange for an email. That's it. If I can get your email, I'll give you in exchange some free resource that you'll think is worth your email, and then I'll have it. The purpose of doing that is to shift the relationship from asking people to buy now, right? Where if I have, you know, if I'm selling guitars, if I have a guitar e-commerce, and I could sell, I have a bunch of uh, product pages, I could set up ads on Facebook and send people to that product page. And a portion of those people, one to 2%, will convert. Well, instead, I'm now going to send those people to a page that offers them 10 free tips to learn the guitar. And in exchange for this free information, they'll give me an email address. Once that happens, and the, the whole point of doing this is that there are multiple ways to get an email address. And I'll show you how Shopify did that in a few minutes. So you could do things like software. You could give a resource or a guide like 10 ways to get better at the guitar what have you. That depends on what product it is that you're trying to sell. And a good lead magnet will be some resource that is number one that is free, that will deliver on one really big specific thing, and it'll deliver on it right now. So it's actionable, something that I can learn how to get better at the guitar right now. The entire idea of a lead magnet is that you're really getting that, sm that, that commitment, a really small commitment, but with a ton of value for your lead, which really greatly increases the propensity to, to actually engage with what it is that you're trying to sell. So great example of a lead magnet is what Shopify was doing. So when Shopify launched, they recognized that they couldn't just create advertisements and send people to their index, to their homepage, because they would only get one or two or 3% to convert. And that obviously didn't work from a, from a customer acquisition point of view. So instead, they dug deeper and figured out that, oh, people who run Facebook pages have this huge pain, which is that they wanna have a store on their Facebook page. So what Shopify did is they splintered away from the entire core offer, this lead magnet, which is that we'll offer you the opportunity to have a Facebook page, a uh, Facebook store on your page for free in exchange for an email address. That's a lot of value. That's instant gratification. That's a good lead magnet. The entire point of building lead magnets is that you'll be creating channels, proprietary assets that you own, which will really allow you to buy the traffic that you're getting from Facebook or from Google instead of renting it. And the reason I'm saying that is because as you send visitors to your website, a lot of them won't do what it is that you want them to do. One or 2% will, but 98% won't. So what happens when those people leave, right? You're losing them out, you're losing out on them. And so the email essentially allows you to do round two, round three, round four down the line. And that's the reason why email is really a, an important resource. 
Now, the, the second part of a system is really what happens after somebody gives you an email address, right? If I'm giving you the opportunity to get 20 free guitar learning tips, I'm gonna have to have a thank you page after you gave me an email. On that thank you page is an incredible opportunity to make a first ask. If we go back to that idea of being at the bar, right? A lead magnet would be, oh, I've got some, a really great idea for you, a really great story for you, and you discuss. The actual tripwire, this first transaction, would be, what's your name? Or can I take you out on a date later, right? It's this first commitment that you get them to take out their credit card or their wallet where you actually start selling something. And the idea being that you're going to make an incredible, and keyword, self-liquidating offer. A self-liquidating offer would be something where uh, the stock is low or it's only available for 30 minutes, right? So think about this idea where you see an ad on Facebook, you love the guitar, you wanna read more and learn more about the guitar, so you click on this ad, you get to a page which tells you, do you wanna learn 10 free tips about the guitar? If so, give me your email. Somebody puts in their email, clicks submit. The thank you page says, great, I'll be sending you your 10 tips by email. By the way, I've got this incredible new deal for you if you're in the process of learning the guitar. Here's 500 guitar picks that everybody needs if they play the guitar for $9. Amazing deal. Take it or leave it. 30 minutes or you're not gonna have it anymore. And a por portion of those people who gave you their email will be interested immediately to do that on the basis that they've shown an interest that they want the guitar and they want to learn more. They've already given you an email, so they have already have a contribution to them getting better to the guitar. And now they have access to a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get something that they know they're going to need anyways. So that's the tripwire. And tripwires are an incredible resource because they have really one purpose. And McDonald's is really good at that. It's to turn regular visitors into buyers. That's the one thing. Even if you get one dollar, they took out their credit card, which means you've broken down a psychological pricing barrier, which is I've already confirmed in my head that it makes sense to take out cash because I see value in what it is that you offer. And so if you do that again, I, I don't need to go through that mental process again. I've already done that. And that's the reason why people say uh, existing customers are the best customers. So the entire purpose of doing this exercise, this two-step system, is that once you do that, you're going to have a flow of new purchasers, people who have already purchased from you, and those are the people that you're gonna go out and tell to buy a guitar. They are much more likely to wanna buy a guitar from you than some random girl in a bar, right? It has, it's a completely different situation. So let's give you a, a tactical example. Going back to that guitar e-commerce, we're going to assume that I've got a $1,000 Facebook budget and I need to bring in some conversions. So I'm gonna go out on Facebook and I'm going to compete against three other guitar e-commerce stores who are also vying for the same traffic. And because uh, the traffic that I'm trying to compete against often sees guitar-related ads, the cost of those ads will be probably around $1.50. And that's being pretty optimistic. I've seen cost per clicks in the four, five, six dollars range in e-commerce. So $1,000 gets me about 660 visits, a percent or two of which will end up buying a guitar, right? And that gets me about six or seven conversions. Now, the idea is that I just spent a dollar and got about $1.40 back. Not bad, but definitely, definitely not great. Let's look at a different example, and this time this will be a system. This system takes that same $1,000 Facebook ad budget, throws it into Facebook, but now instead of trying to sell a product page, you're going to sell access to 10 or 20 guitar learning tips. So you've got a new ad that says, are you trying to learn the guitar? A lot of people are going to be interested in that. And you're, since you're not putting up a product page, people are much more likely to want to engage with your ad because it's something that's actually valuable to them. And so thanks to these two forces, I'm able to acquire new visitors for 50 cents instead of $1.50. And what that creates is obviously that $1,000 turns into 2,000 visits. And those 2,000 visits, I'm going to offer, do you want to give me your email in exchange for 10 free tips? And 40% of them will actually be interested in doing that because they like the guitar 
and they've clicked onto my ad, which tells them, are you interested in learning more? So there's a very large percentage of those people, of those visitors, who will take you up on your lead magnet. I'm actually in the process of running a bunch of lead magnets for Sociable Labs. I've got a bunch of resources that are converting at 70%. So I just need to send 10 visitors, and I get seven leads. That doesn't exist in most other e-commerce uh, opportunities. So going back to this idea, you know, I've got now got 800 emails of people who are interested in learning about the guitar. The thank you page, right, going back to the tripwire, that thank you page, after they've given me an email, I'm going to tell them 500 guitar tip, uh, picks for $9. And I can probably buy 500 guitar picks for, and have them shipped for about three bucks. So about $6 worth of profit. And I've got 800 people who have given me their email. 800 people are hitting my thank you page. And about 10 to 20% of those will actually pick up those guitar picks. That, that happens. And what that does, like I told you, is this system will build an inflow of people who have already purchased from you. This $1,000 investment yielded 160 buyers. It's true they only spent $9 each and $6 profit, but that 160 buyers just paid for your acquisition costs, which was $1,000. You made 960 worth in $9 uh, compounds. And now you can take all of those people who accepted to buy a bunch of guitar picks from you, and you can then offer them via email to buy a guitar. And within one or two or three or four hits, you're actually gonna start seeing a bunch more conversions for the simple reason that these people are primed for it. They wanna learn, the guitar they like guitars, they are interested in learning more about guitar tips for newbies, for example, and they just bought a bunch of guitar picks. So they're much more likely to wanna buy a guitar from you than some girl that you just met in a bar. And the idea about this is that these 160 buyers will generate 16 actual conversions. At 200 bucks a piece, that's 4x return on your spend. So you're essentially doing $1 in, $4 out, versus $1 in, $1.40 out. And now you've basically got an amazing opportunity. You can either double down, right, and spend $4 and make $16, or you could increase your cost per click and do what Amazon does. You could spend more to acquire your customers than everybody else. And that will allow you to essentially take ownership of the entire market for you. That's essentially the fringe benefit of having a system. And the final message that I'd like to move forward with this talk was this idea of being able to market with magnets instead of hammering your message with a sledgehammer. Um, as I close this up, I wanted to talk to you about a, another amazing proprietary channel, which is referral marketing. If you're in the process right now of building an e-commerce store, then you know that you could uh, acquire between 15 and 40% of your customers because your customers are the absolute best source of new customers, and you can enable them to do that using a world-class refer friend program. That's what we do over at Sociable Labs. We work with some of the biggest e-commerce brands in the world, including Frank and Oak, Nine West, Roots, Zolora, and a bunch of others. Um, and since you guys are all great and you've been here and you've listened to me, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be offering, this first time we do this actually, we're going to be offering you 500 customers, your first 500 customers through a refer a friend program free of charge if you sign up with Sociable Labs as a new customer by March 31st. That's it, everybody. Keep calling. Thanks. Thanks a lot.